Welcome back to my channel guys. Just trying all, all kinds of creativity during this lockdown period. Wanted to, you know, try to teach something in a creative way. Let me see how it works. Yeah. Such kind of high speed photographies are very very helpful in uh, research and scientific field. Scientists use high speed photography to study physical movements, measuring phenomena like surface tension and gravitational effects. It's very helpful in a uh, lot of other uh, fields also like in military. The military takes high speed photographies to look at the accuracy of the missile or rockets and it's even possible to record what is happening at the very core of the nuclear explosion. To capture such kind of images in photography, this is a little kind of challenging because your subject is in speed and you're trying to capture something in motion, right? There's something like a motion blur. So the first thing what we have to do over here is have a tripod and uh, go for a lower shutter speed in this condition I had it as my shutter speed as one tenth of a second. So once the bullet was triggered from the gun, I kept focus on the object which is going to get shattered and uh, I set my camera in continuous shot mode. So once the bullet was triggered from the gun, I also ensured that you know the camera is in tripod with one tenth of a second with an aperture of uh, 7.1 and uh, ISO as 100 because I did not use an uh, external uh, lighting for this particular photograph. So once the blurt was shot, since it was in continuous mode, you started to get motion blur pictures. So this, this is the way the motion blur actually comes in this particular photograph. You can see the bullet traveling also. To detail a little more on this particular image, you could actually calculate the speed at which the bullet has traveled and uh, the impact it has created for, of the object, the, the distance which the objects have shattered. So such kind of readings are actually taken for uh, research studies to understand how things work. Uh, what I'm showing you is just a uh, toy gun with, with, a, with a toy object. Uh, but such kind of studies are taken place in uh, real-time missile impacts in creating products uh, like you know how much a bullet can handle uh, so these kind of uh, studies are carried over uh, using such kind of an uh, photography such kind of high speed photographies have been uh, very helpful in terms of uh, figuring out how a sportsman is played it, it's it's been helped in various sports like you talk about uh, you talk about tennis, you talk about table tennis, or you talk about badminton, football, basketball. Every, in every sport, this image, it has been very much helpful, right? Uh, in olden days, we used to have uh, films that you guys are aware of. Even movies were taken using films. Uh, the films which were used for taking movies were called as uh, the positive films. And uh, used for uh, taking in uh, the still cameras were called as negative films. That's the reason why it's, it was called as negative, right? So those positive films were used for uh, analyzing how a player is playing, okay? 
uh, these shots were taken using you know, high-speed photographies like you know uh, how the service has been taken by a batsman and uh, you know such kind of studies have really helped to understand how a player plays and uh, accordingly uh, a plan of action is made how to attack that particular player. So it's, it's been helpful in uh, various fields like this. And one of the uh, very, very important uh, field in terms of uh, where your high-speed photography has helped is on wildlife photographies. You guys must have watched so many uh, wildlife photographies in many other channels, right? Uh, you know, the, the speed in which the frog eats an insect or uh, the speed at which uh, uh, a bird is trying to catch a fish. Right. So these kind of uh, these kind of pictures are, are, are can be made only using uh, with a very high shutter speed, and mostly, right? Mostly, if you take uh, such kind of wildlife photographies, it it will be taken in an uh, you know shutter priority mode where uh, there's no chance for reducing the shutter. Say, for example, a lion is coming to drink water, you don't know what the lion is going to react, right? So you need to be absolutely prepared in terms of your shutter speed. You will be taking bubble shots like taking uh, you know multiple continuous shots of that particular animal uh, with a higher shutter speed so that you get you you tend to capture the kind of uh, picture what you want you guys know i've taken a complete video about shutter speed i recommend you guys to watch those particular uh, video which will help you to understand very clearly how the shutter speed has been uh, helped in taking you know photographs since we're talking about high speed photography let me just talk about the slow shutter speed photographies as well okay slow shutter speed uh, basically thumb rule you need to have a tripod if you're going 125th of a second and mostly where it, where it helps is in terms of you know uh, you want to take a trial of a star or you want to uh, take some motion blurs uh, that is where you actually have a uh, slow shutter speed and uh, take pictures out of it all right guys uh, I just wanted to, you know, make something creative, uh, give you guys a kind of a lesson um, uh, with the creativity of whatever I've taken in a, in a real-time example. Okay, that's the objective and motive of this particular video. I hope you liked it, you enjoyed it. Uh, please do share your comments below, uh, which will help me to also understand what's the kind of a content you're looking out for. And do subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to, and also hit the bell icon so you never miss any notifications as well. And please do like the video if you have really enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.